What's up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my full card breakdown and predictions for UFC Fight Island 4. Holly Holm versus Irene Aldana. And you, if you are a fan of women's MMA, you are going to love this card. We have three women's fights on this card. And a lot of people are sleeping on this card, but I feel like it could be one of those cards where, you know, a lot of people are sleeping on it, not the most name value in that it delivers because there's a lot of fights on this card that are going to be really, really exciting. Of course, the name value is not there, but some of these fights are going to be great. Like Jordan Williams, Nasruddin Imavov is going to be a fantastic fight. Charles Jordan is a very exciting fighter. Um, Kyler Phillips versus Cameron Else is going to be a good fight. Like, there's some really exciting fights on this card. So, I actually do think it's going to deliver here. And uh, on these kind of lower level cards, like the cards that don't have the much name value, they're really good cards to make some money. So, hopefully, uh, make some money here. I already have a couple bets placed. Um, we'll talk about it throughout the card here. But coming off of last week, everything was going fantastic. I hit a nice uh, Vieira and Espino parlay. Um, finally got some women's MMA right. Um, which was awesome to see. And then Klein got that beautiful knockout, had a nice bet on Klein as well, and would have had a monster night if uh, Dominic Reyes would have got the win, but he did not. And just really questionable. I went one and one between the main event and co-main event. Just really questionable game plans by Dominic Reyes and by Paula Costa. Like, um, like completely different fighters that we have seen in the past. Like, Costa went in there and, you know, tried to be a, a counterpuncher against Israel Adesanya, the one thing he should not do. And he let Adesanya tear up his legs, and he was doing nothing about it. I don't know if it was some type of game plan, but, man, he did what you, you should not have done. And then same with Dominic Reyes. Like, he was letting Jan out-volume him early in the first round. I could tell, like, in the middle of the first round, like, he was going to lose that fight. He did not look like he wanted to be there. He was not throwing anything. I think he landed like maybe less than five strikes in that first round. And Jan had a beautiful finish in that second. So I don't know what it is. Like um, they did the complete opposite of what got them to the championship. And they uh, went in there and it wasn't even close. Either fight was not even close. So shout out to Adesanya. Uh, shout out to um, Jan Blakowicz. And uh, I was on Adesanya. I even took a little sprinkle and bet him to win in the fourth and fifth round. He finished Costa a lot earlier than I expected and a lot earlier than, earlier than I'm assuming a lot of people expected. A lot of people thought that he either won by decision or finish, finish him in the later rounds. But, man, um, not even close. Not even close. Um, and then Paula Costa is asking for a rematch. Like, I don't want to see that. Like, you had your chance, and you went out there, and you did that. And you got disrespected. You got dominated in that fight. I just don't want to see that again. But I don't think anybody's going to be Israel Adesanya for a very, very long time. Um, he definitely proved it there. A lot of people were picking Paula Costa, and I was kind of on the edge. I did side with Adesanya ever so slightly, but he made that look easy. So shout out to Adesanya there. But I uh, just want to give a shout out to the contest winners from last week. I was able to get a hold of them and get them their prize winnings. Um, the contest where I said, you know, combined the significant strikes with Costa and Adesanya, somebody guessed 111, and it was actually 110. So he was one away. Very, very impressive on a, on a fight that could have ended in really either round. And that was Dabuki. I um, was able to get a hold of him. And then a Josh to remember for the DraftKings contest. He actually got the optimal lineup in my DraftKings contest. So hopefully he was able to put it in um, some contests there because he definitely had the optimal. Um, so that was cool to see as well. So shout out to both of those guys. And I will be doing another contest uh, for the next pay-per-view in a, a little less than a month, I believe so. Um, before we get started and get into these predictions, if you guys can please leave a like. It helps a ton. Even just a, you know a small like goes a long way. Subscribe if you have not yet. Would really appreciate that a ton. Would love to get 7,000 subs in the near future. We're getting really close to it. We'd love to get that by the next pay-per-view. Um, but with all that said, I'm really I'm ready to get into this card here. And we're going to start with the first fight of the night, which should be an, an exciting one. Uh, Luigi Vandermeen, Vandermeeny versus Jesse Narari. And um, Vandermeeny is 24 years old, still very young, 5'8", 73-inch reach. I'm going to be at a kind of a, a height disadvantage a four inch high disadvantage but only a half an inch of reach disadvantage there eight and one four and one in his last five fights uh justin arari he is 28 years old six foot 73 and a half inch reach 16 and five and three and two in his last five fights so watching tape on arari just not impressed whatsoever he is very very low volume um he has like a 30 percent uh, takedown defense and of course a lot of that was because Darren Till took him down and you know Darren, Darren Till's not really a takedown guy so 
I don't know, just not too impressed at all. He doesn't have much power. I think he has only a couple knockouts on his record. He does have some submissions, but he's not going to go out here and uh, submit Vanderimi, who is a BJJ black belt. And I just think the more dangerous guy is Vandermini um, by a decent margin here. He has finished 100% of his fights, half of them by knockout, half of them by submission. Um, you know, Arari is a BJJ brown belt, but you got to give the, the BJJ credentials all day to Vandermini. He's at a really good camp. Um, even in his last fight against Dos Santos, Celeste Dos Santos, like a, real, a really high level guy in the UFC, of somebody I'm really high on. He almost submitted him. I mean, he got him in a very deep choke. Almost uh, submitted him. If he gets Arari in that same spot, I do think he's going to finish the fight. Um, altogether, I'm probably going to pick Vandermini to win this fight. He's going to be the higher volume guy. If he can get a takedown, I think he's going to get a submission here. Um, he's the more dangerous guy on the feet. Arari just isn't much of a finisher. Only 19% of his fights won by knockout. Um, not much of a power punch. Only 50% won by submission. And like I said, he's not submitting uh, Vandermini. So if uh, Arari wins, it's probably going to be some kind of weird, ugly decision because he's very, very low volume. I just don't see it. And a lot of money is coming in on Arari. And I think I know why. Because Vandermini has not fought you know, anybody really besides Dos Santos and he got knocked out. Arari is the more tested fighter, but I just think the more upside is with uh, Vanarini, and he's still very young. He's still improving. He was like 23 years old when he fought Dos Santos, so I'm, I'm assuming he's made a lot of adjustments. His wrestling does not look bad. Um, Arari, I do think he can be taken down, and if he does, I do think he's going to get submitted here. So give me Vanarini to win by submission. Um, I think there's more pass to victory. Maybe he can win by a knockout. Uh, Arari's been knocked out twice. I think he can win by decision just by out-voluming Arari. I'm just not impressed with Arari like everybody else is. But Arari is a minus 120 favorite. Vandermini is a plus 100 underdog. So uh, the line actually flipped. I think Vandermini was the favorite. He opened up a minus 175. So he is now the slight dog here at plus 100. And I just don't see what everybody else is seeing. I think they're just looking at the level of competition. Um, but I do think that, you know, Vandermini is at a, a very good camp. He's making those adjustments. He's very young. Um, so give me Vandermini to win this fight by submission. Should be a really fun fight. Next we got Casey Kenny versus Hali Alatang. Uh, Casey Kenny is 29 years old, 5'7", with a 68-inch reach, 14-2-1, and 4-1 and in his last five fights. Hali Alatang, he is 28 years old, 5'6". 66 and a half inch reach is going to be at a one inch height advantage height one inch height disadvantage and a one and a half inch reach disadvantage he's 14 and 7 and 1 and 4 and 1 in his last five fights so man i really like casey kenny in this spot quite a bit just watching tape on alatang he's very he hits very hard um but he's very very low volume only lands 2.77 significant strikes per minute and he absorbs 5.10 so he's almost getting doubled um you know outlanded in his fights uh, and he's fought some decent competition, Ryan Benoit. Um, he was able to win both of those fights with some late round wrestling. In the third round, he went out there and took down Benoit. Um, and then in the Dana Baccarel fight, he was able to take down Dana and control him in that third round. But you could arguably give that fight to Dana. He outlanded him by a ton in that fight. And just not all that impressed in Alatang. And I think this is a very bad stylistic matchup for him on the feet. You've got to favor Kenny. He's a really good striker, really underrated striker. Um, he's going to throw a ton more volume than Alatang. And then if Alatang does want to go to that wrestling, which I do think he could, Casey has been taken down a ton in the UFC, a lot by Ray Borg, Bermudez, um, even Marab Devalishvili took him down 12 times, which no shame in that, but his get-up game is very good. He's really hard to hold down. He has very, very good uh, reversals and sweeps. He's legit on the mat, so I don't know if Alatang does want to take him down because I do think it will get reversed. I think even Kenny can come out here and get takedowns. Um, I just really like this fight for Kenny. Anywhere the fight goes, I think he's better on the mat. I think he's better on the feet. And outside of a knockout from Alatang, I just don't see him winning. I think he's going to get outvolumed. I think on the mat, he's going to get outworked. Um, Alatang has a 29% knockout rate. 21% uh, by submission, he's not going to submit Kenny. Um, Kenny has a 14% knockout rate, 36% by submission. I think, if anything, maybe Kenny gets a submission if this does hit the mat. Like, Kenny is legit. So give me Casey Kenny to win. I'm going to take it safe and say by decision, but I do think that, you know, a submission is definitely possible if Kenny does take him down. I think he's, you know, way more high level on the mat than Alatang. And Alatang has been finished twice. Um, I think by knockout twice. 
yeah, Alatang has been knocked out twice here, so um, don't think Alatang has ever been submitted, but there is a first for everything. I do think he could be. Um, never mind, Alatang has been submitted once, and Alatang has been knocked out three times. So, yeah, Alatang's been finished four times in his career. I do think Casey Kenny could maybe finish him, but I'm going to take it safe and say Casey Kenny uh, by decision there. Next, we got a really exciting fight here, and that is... Wait... We forgot to take a look at the odds. Uh, Kenny minus 310. Alatang is plus 255. Um, you could argue that line's a little bit wide, but uh, I really do like Kenny to win this fight. So minus 310 is it's fine to me. Next, we got Luma, Luke Bumi versus Jin Yu Fry. Uh, Luke Bumi is 24 years old, still very young, still improving each and every fight. 5-1, she's going to be at a 2-inch height disadvantage. 62-inch uh, reach, going to be at a 3-inch reach disadvantage. And you can tell in you know a, a bunch of her fights, she's always at a height in a reach disadvantage. She should be fighting at a weight class below, um, but of course the UFC does not have a weight class below the 115, so um, you could say the same thing for uh, Jin Yu Fry, though. She has fought at 105 before Adam Waite, um, and uh, that's probably where Luke Boomy should be fighting, but I don't know. I, I really like Luke Boomy in this matchup. Fry is going to be nine, 11 years older than uh, Luke Boomy, 35 years old, 5'3", 65-inch reach, 9-5, and five. And three and two in her last five fights. And Luke Bumi is only four and two, but she has so much Muay Thai experience. She's been fighting since she was eight years old. Um, they said that she used to, you know, go in the boys' division um, back when you know she was little. And you know, she's a beast, and she's improving. And I know she's still very young in her MMA career, but you can see those improvements, improvements time in and time out. And she's very, very strong. She's going to land more volume than uh, Fry. Fry is a, a girl that's very low volume in her fight with Kay Hansen. She was looking really good in that first round against Hansen. Ended up getting dominated in that second and finished in that third. But, you know, Hansen, you should be looking good against her in, in striking. Hansen is not great at striking whatsoever. What she wants to do is get it to the mat. So, yeah, Fry looked great in that first round. But, you know, you know, Hansen, you know, she should be looking good against Hansen if they were striking. And then finally, Hansen was smart and took her down and got the finish, um, which I was on Hansen in that fight. But Luke Boomy, you know, she's going to, you know, in the clinch, she throws really good knees, really good elbows. She's really powerful, but she only has one knockout, I believe, in her uh, six fights here. Uh, Fry, I think she only has like one knockout as well. So this is probably going to go to decision here. And I'm going to lean uh, Luke Boomy by a decent margin because she's going to throw more volume. She's really good in the clinch. Although Fry is good in the clinch herself, I do think Luke Boomy is a lot better, and she's still very young. She's still improving. I think if this hits the mat, it's Luke Boomy getting the takedown. She has very good trips, very good throws, good top control as well. And uh, we saw Fry struggle with the ground game of Hanson, and of course, Luke Boomy has nowhere near the you know the ground game of Hanson, but I do think she can get the fight to the ground. And I don't see the same thing for Fry. I don't think she's going to take down uh, Luma here. Luma's very strong, really good takedown defense. And Luma went to a very close decision with Angela Hill. She actually landed more significant strikes than Angela Hill, believe it or not. And of course, a lot of that was because uh, Angela Hill did have a lot of control, but still very impressive only in your second UFC fight to go to a pretty close decision with Angela Hill there. 24 years old, making improvements. I really like Luma here. Um, we'll take a look at the line, and it is at minus 140 now. Um, I, did, I think she opened up at minus 120, so money is coming in on Luma, and rightfully so. I just don't see it with Fry. She's, you know, towards the end of her career, uh, 35 years old. Luma's, you know, the younger fighter, making those improvements, making those adjustments each and every fight, working on what she needs to work on, which would, you know, be that ground game. But I don't think she's going to have to, you know, worry about that here with Fry. So give me a look with me by a decision. Um, could be maybe close, but I just think the volume is going to be too much for uh, Jin Yu Fry there. Next we got, this has potential to be fight of the night, and a fight I'm really struggling to pick a winner on. Uh, Jordan Williams versus Nasruddin Imavov. Williams is 29 years old, 6 foot, 76 and a half inch reach. He is 9 and 3, 3 and 1 and 1 in his last five fights. Uh, Nasruddin Imavov is 24 years old, 6'3", 75 and a half inch reach, 8 and 2 and 5 and 0 in his last five fights. So, like I said, tough fight to call. Williams is someone who's very tough. He has been finished twice. Uh, once was because of a stoppage um, due to a cut in a fight that he looked like he was, you know, pretty much dominating that fight. And the other, he was knocked out by Dwight Grant. Um, but other than that, he looks pretty tough to me. He's going to throw a ton of volume. This is going to be a firefight, you know, fight of the night contender here. And Imavov is, you know, kind of the complete opposite. He's going to, you know, take his time, find his spots, low volume. 
But when he hits, he hits very hard. And, you know, Williams does leave a ton of openings. He's there to be hit. And you could say the same thing for Imavov. But, man, in a fight that is going to be a firefight, I think someone's going to get knocked out. I'm going to lean with the underdog here in Imavov. I do like his uh, his style there. He's, he's really technical. He's really patient. And if he's patient in this fight, you know, Williams can kind of tend to slow down in his fights. I think that Imavov can get a late finish, maybe even an early finish as well. Uh, Williams is there to be be hit, and when Imavov lands, he lands hard. So I'm going to take the underdog here to get the win, and Imavov is uh, plus 125. So people are actually betting on him. He opened up at like minus uh, at plus 200, and he's now down to plus 125. Um, I think people are realizing that this should be pretty much a pick 'em fight, and someone probably is going to sleep here. And although Williams is tough, we have seen him knocked out before. I'm going to take a shot on the dog here in Imavov. I think it's going to be a very close fight. So I'm going to lean with the dog here to get the knockout win. I'm going to say uh, third round knockout win. Next, we got a pretty solid fight here in Charles Air Jordan versus Joshua Kalibau. And Jordan is 24 years old, still very young, 5'9", 69 inch reach, going to be at a 4 inch reach disadvantage, uh, 10 and 3 and 3 and 2 in his last five fights. Joshua Kalibau, he is 26 years old, 5'10", 73 inch reach. 8-1 and 4-1 and and in his last five fights. So this should be pretty much Jordan all day. I mean, we saw Kulabau in his last fight, his first fight in the UFC versus Jalen Turner. He got absolutely dominated. Um, he was trying to work the ground game, and you know Turner was able to turn it around on him and you know, pound him out on the mat. And uh, Turner's not really someone that you know takes it down to the ground, but he was able to control Kulabau, finish him on the mat there. Um, and man, yeah, I, I really like Jordan in this fight. He's someone who's really impressed me. In the Andre Feely fight, he almost uh, took out Andre Feely early in that fight. Ended up losing a pretty close decision. A lot of people were actually picking Jordan to beat Feely. Um, I was not one of those people, but man, it was a it was a lot closer than I expected it to be. And you know, Feely is someone I'm very very high on. But Jordan, he's very very tough. He's never been finished. Um, he has a hundred percent finish rate. He's there to get the finish. I think he has a very clear path to victory here, and that would be to take down Kulabau. Um, you know, Jordan is, is pretty solid on the mat, has pretty solid submissions as well. I do think if he gets, um, you know, Kulabau down to the mat, I do think he could possibly submit him. I think he's more high level than Kulabau on the mat. It's just, you know, Jordan is someone who wants to go out there and win that 50K bonus, and he's come out there and said that. So I do think he's going to come out there and stand and bang with Kulabau, and I do think you got to give the durability to um, Jordan. You give the power advantage to Jordan. Um, he's more technical. He's a better striker. He's better pretty much everywhere. And outside of a knockout, I just don't see Jordan losing this fight. And, you know, Jordan has a chin on him. So give me Charles Jordan to win by knockout here um, against Kulabau. Just not impressed with Kulabau whatsoever. He's fought, you know, pretty low level competition once he got a step up against Jalen Turner. And a lot of people will hate on Jalen Turner. I, I, I'm not one of those people, but, you know, he got, you know, dominated by Jalen Turner in that fight from start to finish. So I'm um, really high on Jordan. I think this is a great matchup for him. Just taking a look at the odds. The odds are getting really wide here. Um, he opened up minus 365. He is now minus 445. I would not be surprised if that line got even wider. People started adding them into their parlays towards fight time. Um, could see minus 500, but, um, you know, can't complain with that line, I don't think. Uh, Kulabau has a great chance of winning this fight outside of some type of knockout, which I don't think is likely. So give me uh, Charles Jordan to win the fight by knockout. Okay, now we got a really weird fight here that, I mean, it's it's a tough fight to call. Court McKee, he is 35 years old, 5'11", 75 and a half inch reach, 19 and 9, 1 and 4 in his last five fights. Carlos Condit, he is 36 years old, 6'2". Uh, 76 inch reach, going to have a, about a half an inch of reach advantage. 30 and 13, 0 and 5 in his last five fights. Uh, so both of them are combined 1 and 9 in their last 10 fights. Someone's got to win here. Um, you know, I think it could be fairly close. I think Condit's the better striker. Um, Condit on the mat, you know, is pretty pretty solid on mat. He has nice reversals. He throws up nice submissions. So McKee's definitely going to have to be careful on the mat. It's just. There's a clear game plan for Court McGee. Uh, McKee does land 4.86 significant strikes per minute with a 35% accuracy. He absorbs 3.8 with a 61% strike in defense. Uh, Condit averages 3.56 significant strikes per minute, 39% accuracy, uh, 2.4 absorbed per minute with a 57% strike in defense. And this is really where I think the fight is going to be won and lost with McKee, and that's the, the grappling, the takedowns. Uh, McKee averages 1.71 takedowns per 15 minutes with a 21% accuracy, 63% uh, takedown defense. And Condit, 
averages 0.58 takedowns per 50 minutes with a 55% accuracy. And Condit has a 36% takedown defense. I think he's been taken down in like pretty much every single one of his UFC fights besides like a couple. Um, it's just so easy to take down. And this is, you know, the, the, the path to victory is, is written on the wall for Court McGee. And we all see it. We all know it. And that is to get a takedown. And and really what it comes down to for me is, you know, McGee's more than capable of going out there and getting a takedown. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are able to take down Condit at this point in his career. And I just don't think like outside of a submission off of Condit's back, I just don't see how he wins this fight. So um, a lot of people are on McKee and you can see it in the betting line. Um, let's see. McKee is minus 130. Opened up as an underdog. Minus one, plus 125. He's now minus 130. So people are betting McKee. And, you know, I can see why. The path to victory is right there. Although I do think Condit's probably the better fighter overall, even at this point in their careers. I mean, the path to victory is there for McKee. Um, Condit has finished 93% of his wins, um, 50% by knockout, 43% by submission. And like I said, outside of like a submission for from Condit, I do think that uh, I do think that uh, McKee's going to win this fight. And McKee has never been submitted. Uh, McKee has been knocked out once. So give me Court McGee to win a pretty pretty ugly decision here. Um, but you know, like I said, someone's got to win this fight. Um, one in one in nine in their last ten fights combined is just crazy. But give me Court McGee um, due to the fact that the path to victory is there. But um, just can't see Connett getting it done. So Court McGee for me. Um, weird fight here. Um, it is Dusko Todorovic versus Daquan Townsend. Uh, Todorovic is 26 years old, 6-1 with a 74-inch reach, 9-0, and 5-0 and in his last five fights. Daquan Townsend, 34 years old, 6'3", 79-inch reach. He's going to have a 2-inch height advantage and a 5-inch reach advantage. 21-11 and 11 and 2-3 and three in his last five fights. He's lost his last three. I just want to point out the odds. Like uh, Tudorovic is minus 325, and Townsend is plus 265. And I just... I can understand why. I think it's more of a fade on Townsend because I just wasn't all that impressed with Tudorovic. Um, he's someone who, you know... In his last fight on the Contender Series, he was able to grind his opponent up against the cage, get a win that way. His hands are decent, pretty solid volume. Um, he leaves a lot of openings, though. He gets hit a lot, and I don't know if that's a good thing here against Townsend. And uh, say what you want about Townsend, like, um, but he does have some pretty solid power. Townsend has finished 81% of his fights, 57% by knockout. And Tudor Rubich has finished 89% of his fights. Um, including he finished uh, Michelle Pereira, someone who we who we really have grown to like nowadays. Um, but man, Townsend is he's obviously not UFC level. It's just this this is a kind of a sketchy fight. I'm not all that impressed with Tudorovic. If he comes in here with the game plan of holding up Townsend against the cage like he kind of did in the his contender series fight, clear path to victory. He will maybe look like a minus 300 favorite. But if he stands and bangs with Townsend, who's going to have a five inch reach advantage. Um, you know, the more experienced guy, 32 fights on his record compared to Tudorovic's nine, um, more than triple is, of his fights there. I don't know, I think it could be close because he's very hittable. And, you know, Townsend does have that power. But I'm assuming he's going to come in here with the game plan of, you know, grinding Townsend, maybe taking him down. Um, and if you get Townsend down, like the fight's, the round's over. The round is over. He has nothing to offer off of his back. Um, even if you get him up against the cage, again, he has nothing to offer. Tudorovic does look strong, but I'm just not all that impressed with what I've seen. So I'm going to lean Tudorovic. I'm definitely not putting him in a parlay or anything because um, I do see him get hit a ton. Um, he, you know, His head movement's all right, I guess, but he is still there to be hit. And Townsend, say what you want about him, but he does hit hard. But uh, give me Tudorovic to come out here, grind Townsend up against the cage, get a decision. I don't see him finishing Townsend. Maybe he does, but Townsend's very tough. He's only been finished twice in 32 fights. So Tudorovic for me by... Um, probably a really, really boring, ugly, grinding decision. And the complete opposite of this fight, which is going to be a very, very exciting fight, um, a fight that should end pretty early here in Kyler Phillips versus uh, Cameron Else. Phillips is 26 years old, 5'8", 70 and a half inch reach, 7-1 and one and 4-1 and one in his last five fights. Cameron Else, he is 29 years old, 5'8", 10-4 and 5-0 and and oh in his last five fights. Taking a look at the odds here, Phillips is minus 450, and uh, Else is plus 360 there. 
And uh, watching tape on Els, just not impressed whatsoever. I mean, he's a he's a finisher. He likes to get it. He likes to get it done early. I think he's been to decision, um, maybe like one time in his career. Um, yeah, he's been to decision one time in his career, and that one uh, time he did lose that fight. He's finished 50% of his fights by knockout, 50% of his fights by submission. Uh, Kyler Phillips has a 71% finish rate himself. I do see someone getting finished in this fight. Um, I think Phillips has more past the victory here. He's going to throw a ton more volume. Um, I just think I just think he's going to knock out Else. I think he can easily take him down. Um, Else does have a pretty solid submission game, but I don't think it's good enough to like submit Phillips or anything. And outside of a, a first round stoppage by Else, I do think Phillips is going to dominate this fight. You know, from the second it starts, I think he's way better everywhere. I just think Else is very very low level. So, give me Phillips inside the distance here. Else, of course, is, you know, live. He's dangerous in that first round. But outside of that, I see Phillips getting it done fairly easy, probably, in that late first round, maybe early second round uh, stoppage there for Phillips. Fairly confident in this pick. Um, just I don't think Else is uh, UFC caliber by any means. All right, next we got Jermaine Durandamy versus Juliana Pena. Uh, Durandamy is 36 years old, 5'9", with a 72.5-inch reach, 9-4, and 4-1 and four and in her last five fights. Juliana Pena, she is 31 years old, 5'6", 69-inch reach, 9-3, and 4-1 and and in the last five fights. So Pena is going to be at a 3-inch height adva- disadvantage and a 3.5-inch reach disadvantage as well. Uh, Duranami, she lands 2.72 significant strikes per minute compared to Pena's 2.96. Uh, she absorbs 2.15. Uh, Pena absorbs 1.51 significant strikes per minute as well. Looking at the takedown stats here, uh, Juliana Pena averages 2.6 takedowns per 15 minutes with a 52% accuracy. Uh, Durandamy has a 71% takedown defense, and a lot of that was because Amanda Nunez took her down like five or six times, which uh, there's no shame in that whatsoever. Um, the finish stats here, Pena has a 42% submission rate, uh, 25% knockout rate, 67% finish rate overall, and Durandamy has a 44% knockout rate. You know, she does have some power. Uh, Durandamy has been knocked out once, and Pena has been submitted once. So kind of a, a tough fight to call here, actually. I think at first I was a lot more confident in Durandamy. Um, but she's 36 years old. She is getting up there in age. But still, I think she's I think she's fine here. Um, I have seen her held against the cage. Uh, I've seen her taken down. And, you know, that's Pena's path to victory for sure. I just think on the feet there's a big discrepancy in the striking, in the power. And that is Durandamy all day on the feet. It's just, is Pena going to come out here and take her down? I don't know. Durandamy looks really strong. Um... I'm going to say that she's able to stop the takedowns, keep it on the feet for most of the time. I guess what I'm worried about is if she gets controlled up against the cage. But even then, she's fairly strong. Um, I do think she can maybe reverse position and just, you know, break break it and and get to range. And if Pena does get her down, I do think Pena can get some top control. But I'm I'm leaning towards Duranami is going to stop those takedowns. But it really is a very close fight because she very well could get Duranami down. This could be a very close fight, but uh, I'm going to lean with the better striker, and I think that's where the fight's going to play out most of the time, and that is going to be on the feet. So give me Durand- Durandamy. And I was looking at maybe placing a bet on her like last week. I saw her at plus 100. She's now minus 135. She opened up plus 110. Just going to stay away from this point because I do see a path to victory for Pena, but I'm going to pick uh, Durandamy to win this fight by uh, by decision. All right, getting into the co-main event, and why is this the co-main event, you ask? I don't. I, I really don't know. It's 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 weird. Like, um, this is a you know really low level weird co-main event, but it should be fun, I guess. Uh, Jorgen De Castro versus Carlos Felipe. Uh, De Castro is 32 years old, six foot, 74 inch reach, six and one and four and one in his last five fights. Carlos Felipe, he is 25 years old, six foot, 75 inch reach, eight and one and four and one in his last five fights. And Felipe is someone I picked against his last time against uh, Sergey Spivak. And the fight was a little bit closer than I wanted it to be until that third round. Spivak, you know, 10 8 him, took him down, dominated him on the mat. I don't think he's going to have to worry about that here in DeCastro. I think he's going to get the fight he wants, and that is uh, some striking going on. But Felipe looked very unimpressive through decent volume in that fight. Um, just very, very hittable. Uh, and that's a recipe for disaster against a guy like Jordan DeCastro, who's, who hits very hard. Um, the problem with DeCastro is he's pretty low volume, lands only 2.19 significant strikes per minute. We saw in the Hardy fight, he started out decent and then just like completely fell off a cliff, throwing pretty much nothing in that fight. You know, very frustrating, especially for the people 
that um, you know were betting on DeCastro, and a lot of people I saw picking against Hardy in that fight, which uh, I wasn't one of those guys, but you know I thought it would be a lot closer than that. But what DeCastro does bring is, is those extremely hard leg kicks. He has really, really good leg kicks, and Felipe is hard, heavy on that lead leg there. So I do think DeCastro is going to tear up that lead leg. Um, but I just feel like this could be like one of those sloppy heavyweight fights that, you know, unless DeCastro knocks him out, and that's very possible he does, but I feel like it's going to be a really sloppy, boring fight here. Um, you know, both guys kind of low volume. Felipe is going to be in there talking to him, trying to, you know, get him to engage. I don't know, like he did in the Spivak fight. He was talking crap to Spivak all fight. It was pretty funny. Um, but man, give me DeCastro. I think he's going to work those legs probably get a knockout I, I guess but if he doesn't get a knockout I feel like it could be a lot closer than the line indicates and that is uh, minus 260 um, DeCastro plus 220 um, Felipe and uh, DeCastro opened up minus 350 so people are taking shots on Felipe and, and I guess I, I do think uh, DeCastro is you know not somebody we all thought he was against uh, Tafa he was able to get that early knockout but you know, he looked awful against Greg Hardy. He really did. And I know that's it's Greg Hardy's way more athletic than Felipe, but still concerning how much um, volume he did not put out. Like, he was very low volume in that fight. So, give me DeCastro. Probably gets a knockout. I'm probably going to leave him out of my parlays because I do have a weird feeling this could be a lot closer than the line indicates, but he should get the knockout. I mean, I do think he's the much better fighter here. All right, and now it's time for the main event. You know, not the most exciting main event in the world by any means. Holly Holm versus Irene Aldana. Holm is 38 years old, 5'8", 69-inch reach, 13-5, and 3-2 and and in her last five fights. Aldana is 5'9", 68.5-inch reach, 12-5, and 4-1 and in her last five fights. So six years younger than Holm here. Holm lands only 2.75 significant strikes per minute compared to Aldana's 6.16. So a lot more volume coming from Aldana. And we all know what Holly Holm is going to do. Uh, she's going to try to hold Aldana up against the cage, make it a very boring, grinding fight. And maybe she does, but you know, when it's when it's standing, when they're when they're broke away, I do gotta favor Aldana just by throwing more output. Um, I do think she's, you know, close. Uh, I think the striking is close, but I do gotta edge Aldana, you know, just with more output there. Um I don't know. I think this is going to be a really boring fight here. Um, I'm not all that interested in this fight as a whole, but I'm going to lean Aldana. Um, just I think she's going to be able to do more. And, and of course, Holm could hold her up against the cage like she has done in her past couple fights besides the Nunez fight where she got knocked out uh, with that head kick. Um, I don't really see this touching the mat. Uh, Holm only averages 0.5 takedowns with a 27% accuracy. Aldana has a 93% takedown defense. Um, Aldana knocked out. Uh, Caitlin Vieira in that first round, her last fight, which surprised a lot of people. And Aldana does have a 75% finish rate overall. Holm does have a 62% finish rate. But I do think it's probably going to decision. I think Holm is towards the end of her career, 38 years old. That's It's definitely getting up there, especially for women's MMA. I do think she's slowing down a little bit. I think Aldana is a younger fighter here, hungrier fighter. And I'm going to go with Aldana in a very close, boring, probably a split ugly decision um i can see home trying to make it a very boring fight but when it's at range you got to favor aldana i do think um the fight should play out there a decent amount of time so give me a uh, irene aldana to win by decision not the most exciting main event by any means whatsoever not the most exciting card as a whole but you know like we touched on like there's some really good fights on the card i think it's going to be a card that does surprise a lot of people um, but that's about it guys. If you guys have any questions, you can comment below. Uh, please leave a like. It helps a ton. Subscribe if you have not yet. Would really like to get 7,000 subscribers before the next pay-per-view card. You can follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram is DFS by the numbers. Make sure you guys tune in to the live stream on Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Going over the weigh-in, some of my bets, final thoughts, all that good stuff. And, um, and yeah, that's about it. And uh, good luck if you guys have any bets. Um, I have a couple so far, pretty confident in them, and then probably looking at some other bets as well. This isn't the best card in the world for betting, um, especially with all these women's MMA fights on there, but there are some spots that I do like. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. And Until next time, guys, and, and good luck.